I understand the magnitude of the task ahead, President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu says. As we count down to Inauguration Day, we address concerns of ethnic and religious groups and the task ahead for Bola Ahmed Tinubu and all progressive Congress's governorship candidate in River State, Tonya Cole, denies withdrawing petition against the results of the state governorship elections. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. President-elect Bola Tinubu yesterday began his final movement to Aso Villa, the seat of government. He reflected on the weight of responsibility on his shoulders as he received the baton of service and transitioned documents from outgoing President Muhammad Buhari during an impressive ceremony at the State House in Abuja. The president-elect who paid tribute to President Buhari is a Democrat. He said he understood the magnitude of tasks ahead of him, assuring that he will not disappoint Nigerians. Critics say there is a little to show for Buhari's excessive borrowing, but Tinubu, who inherits three times more debts than Buhari did when he was first elected in 2015, uh, his concern will be how to boost revenue since he cannot borrow as much as Buhari did without worsening the precarious debt burden. Well, joining us to discuss this is Babashala Adegui. He's a political analyst. Also joining us is Sunny Maduka, also a political uh, analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us, and good evening. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Yes. It's interesting uh, because, all, of, of course, all eyes are on the FCT looking forward to the um, inauguration of uh, the president-elect, Bola Metinbu, and his vice, uh, Kashim Shatima. Of course, for the states that um, will be also experiencing inauguration for uh, their governors, um, it's, the whole country is going to be agog with ceremonies, pomp, and uh, uh, pageantry. But... What's most important or the most concern for Nigerians is the task that lies ahead for the president-elect. I'll start with you, Baba Shola. Um, most people are seeking for political will um, because many who have criticized the Buhari administration have criticized the lack of political will to make a lot of things happen. Do you, um, in, in assessing the person of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, do you see a man that is armed with the political will to do the things that need to be done to push Nigeria to where it ought to be. Babashala, can you hear me? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mary Anna. I can't hear you, I'm asking. Go ahead. I believe you can hear me too. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, I have one thing I'm so much in it. The Bola Ahmed Tinubu, but definitely I'm not saying I'm so sorry, Baba Shala. We're having issues hearing you. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Baba Shala. We can't hear you. Um, I think that your connection is really bad. We cannot hear you. I'm going to toss that question to Madhuka to see if we can answer it while we try to fix your audio. Hello? Yes, Mr. Madhuka, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I... You can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I I just, uh, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, that uh, we're having a celebration or inauguration where uh, Nigerians are not uh, truly happy. And, uh, you know, you can't talk about what you want to do for the people when the citizens are not uh, carried along. Uh, just recently, the military has declared every Nigerian, uh, you know, uh, non crash in terms of coming to even be part of the inauguration. Abuja's are today is locked down. So 
I don't know how we are going to do on this inauguration that people are talking about. Uh, at least, in all that I know, inauguration should be a national celebration. But if you look at what is happening today, you discover that it's as if the whole country is in mourning. And probably because of the expectations that uh, we haven't met in terms of uh, who is coming on board. I remember during the OBJ second term, uh, it was rumored there was an election, rigging, violence, and whatever. But never have I had it so bad that citizens as are today are not part of the inauguration. It is like uh, this inauguration is for certain airlines, not for the entire citizens. It's like the selected people who should be part of the inauguration, not the entire citizens. And when I watch other countries' inauguration of their president, it's a national affair. Every citizen has a right to be part of this particular celebration. But you can see what is happening. Everybody is quarantined. You're not supposed to step out of your house, even to go and witness the inauguration. So as of now, uh, irrespective of whatever they promise, the issue is that, and I want to say this, any victory that tends to break down the constitution of a nation will not be legally, legally recognized. And probably why the citizens are not in this mood of being part of what is happening or I'm, what is going to happen. I'm trying to, under, I'm trying to understand what the legality here is because whether we like it or not, INEC had announced him as the president-elect, clearly stating the, the number of votes that he had. Yes, of course, the tribunal will run its course, but until then... Uh, there cannot be a vacuum in government. He was announced as the winner. He's going to be sworn in. And the courts will be left to do their job or the tribunal. So I don't see any legalities. If, you might be talking about justice being done, but that is left to the courts. So uh, because there is somebody who's going to be sworn in, we definitely have to talk about what the person's capable of doing. Now, again... Um, and let me tell you where there's illegality. We have a constitution that spells out most of the things you are supposed to do. Even the announcement was hardly done. Have you ever heard where announcement was made by 4 a.m.? Have you ever heard where announcement, somebody who is telling you to go to court? Have you heard that? You, you, you see, the issue is that we all know the truth. I think this country is that, uh, which I used to describe. If you are, are being abnormal, it's normal in this country. We talk about the 25 percent in FCT. Has he been? Is he not? Is he not constitution? So if you are, if you are against that, it's illegal. So everything about this particular thing is illegal. And uh, let me take you back. If you look at the number according to you that uh, it's all about uh, the number of votes, no, there are other clauses, the other provisions that you will meet before you are declared a president-elect. As of today, I'm talking to you. Alec is still uploading the presidential result in the IFR. So which result did they use in, in, in uh, bringing out uh, this uh, election result? Which result? Then you talk about other things like, uh, you know, the, 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 in, 19, in 20, uh, 2003, this same issue of 25 was, uh, you know, adjud was adjudged. It was between OBJ and BMB. It was clear, and it was stated there, that 25% is mandatory for you to be declared as a president. Did he get it? No. I think we are just trying to play the gallery. And as Nigerians, as docile as we are, everybody will say, okay, let's go. It is not the truth. Your constitution is your bedrock, is your foundation. It's not like you're building a house and then you start digging out the foundation. How would the house stand? Mm, so these are the issues. Okay. Now it's becoming very, very 
serious for citizens to even go to court. You can see the three judge uh, the three uh, judgments. The three judgments are all against the citizen. We talk about the 14 million. We talk about the 15 million. We talk about the two million. So every citizen that even goes to court now is going to be uh, probably charged for even asking for rights to be to, to to for the constitution to be interpreted. So okay. the country, as far as I'm concerned today, is just living on on, on on a pedestal of you know nothingness. And let me tell you, in every even in sports, if you win a race. You are supposed to jubilate with the spectators. The spectators are supposed to jubilate with you. They are supposed to embrace you. They are supposed to be happy. But today, can you say that citizens are happy? Well, can well, you say that citizens but, are but there, but, the but there are those who are happy, whether we like it or not. There are those who, who supported are not the presidency. And that is why, as as today, the, the president elect. There are people who are supporters of Mr. President or Mr. President elect, and then they are happy. And when you say that, you know, um, people are shut out from the event, there are people who will be in attendance. It's just for security reasons. Hence, you know, it being an event that is strictly by invitation. But but I'll put a plug here now. I, I'll put a pin here now and come back to you. Let me go to Babashala. Babashala, just picking up from where uh, Mr. Maduka stopped, um, looking at the task that is ahead of uh, the Tinubu uh, elect, uh, president-elect, of course, the Tinubu administration after being sworn in uh, on Monday. Uh, issues such as the one that uh, Mr. Maduka has raised, obviously, um, will be daunting for him, having to be able to calm frayed nerves and, of course, um, somewhat trying to convince people that he de he's deserving of this um, um, position. How easy a task is that going to be? Okay, sorry about the network issues I had. Uh, on the agenda 17, I think that the president actually, the incoming president has actually had a lot of things to face when he comes in after this point in on May 29. Um, there is something that I can be certain of, and that is just uh, that uh, I believe that we will perform better than Buhari. That is my belief. But I can tell you the man is not going to meet up with the expectations of Nigeria based on the issues that have been on ground. For example, the issues of how you won the election and the, the issues of security, the issues of the division uh, and among us in Nigeria, it has a lot of things to face, actually, as the a, as a president for May 29. So the man has to, be, has to be strategic. If you actually want to rule this country and make it the dream of me up, even, even up to the quarter of the expectation of Nigeria, I, I would say it's a great plan for achieving that. But there are all the main issues must be addressed. They must be addressed. Because you can't just come on in, you can't just come in as the president. I want to continue from where the last president or the outgoing president uh, uh, stopped. Just like they have said, that they will continue to build on the on the performance of the achievement. And if you ask me, what is the performance or the achievement of this president? I can tell you, President Buhari, they could not have failure. So if you are telling me you want to continue on, the, on, on, on that ground, it means that you are telling me that you want to make it more worse. You get But I want to believe that is not the, 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 uh, uh, the impression they were making at the time they were making it. I just want to, don't want to believe. I want to have a disbelief of it. But I believe that if the president, who are, uh, uh, the incoming president, is serious, I remember is an advocate of the restructuring in Nigeria. Let's start the key. Let's hit the ball rolling immediately. It's not a party time. Nigerians expect a president that will make that will make a better Nigeria, not a part, not not a, a not a nation for the few. Or just like we have it under this current regime. We want a nation that we can be proud of. We want a nation that we Nigerians can say yes. Before before we before we before we get to making the nation what it is, I asked a simple question. How easy is it going to be for Bola Ahmed Tinubu to convince Nigerians that he's deserving to be president of this country, knowing how what marred the election, how the election turned out. Again, because it's one thing to say you're president. It's another thing for people to accept you and your administration. Whether we like it or not, he's going to be sworn in on Monday. But he has a job of convincing. How easy is that going to be? Definitely, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy because 
there are issues surrounding his personality. Apart from the issues of highly declaring the election and up to now, they are still opposing results. There are issues surrounding his personality, has been accused of being a drug baron, has been accused of not having a, 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 a US a university certificate, has been accused of not having any bank that education based on the primary or secondary school, have, have been accused of, of his name. That oh, it's not the right name. He's using an, an adopted name, or he's using another. Uh, he used a, a, another person's certificate. He has a lot of things to to, to play, even about himself. And that not a lot. Then on, on in a, for, for the country, he also has issues to play in respect of uh, running out the blueprint. Your plan for Nigeria. Convince us. We need to be convinced that yes, this. is... Later we like it or not, he has, he, he has been declared and he's going to be funny. So we have no choice than to until to work with him until until the judiciary sector says otherwise. So for me, he has a lot of he has a lot of things to do to convince we Nigerians in respect of this. Or else we are just we will just be there at the ceremony and we know that we have a president that is not even controlling that does not have the staff the respect of Nigerians. Mm. Back to you. And the, and the organization. Okay, back to you, uh, Mr. Maduka. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, let's pray for him and hope that, because, okay, again, in Nigeria, we're very quick to, you know, jettison our responsibilities and, and go to religion and say, oh, let's pray for the man uh, and hope that he can deliver, uh, even though there are concerns about his health. But then there were same concerns about President Buhari, uh, and here he is, um, eight years down the line. Um, Many are also saying that there has to be um, a sustained implementation of people-oriented policies. Again, we go back to the personality of the man because, yes, you can have an idea. Many would also say that President Buhari had the best intention for Nigerians, but the establishment uh, worked against him. Now, this has been a man who's called himself a kingmaker, and now the kingmaker is king. Um, Will the kingmaker be able to put together the kind of people that will surround him, that would be able to help him um, one way or the other, bring together or bring about this people-oriented policies? Or do you see a man who's all about his political ambition? Yeah, and let me tell you something. Leadership is all about service. But you know that this man came on a platform of entitlement, you know, ambitious entitlement. It is my turn. So that alone has given him a minus. So he came to Nigeria and said, look, I must rule. So it's a different thing where you are championing to be a leader of the country. It is not going to be a must. For the prayer you talked about, I just laughed because I don't know who is going to pray for him because the witches and the wizards They've already intensified their effort to pray for him. Which of us are going to pray for him? Is it the Muslim or the Christian? I see, the issue is that we have uh, used religion in Nigeria to the extent that we have, we have not even understood what is spiritual and what is uh, religion. Everything has been ritualized. You know, pray for, pray for who? You can only pray for somebody who believed in you. If you watch from when he was campaigning. There was fake prophets. There was fake bishops. So everything about this man, like my brother said, is fake. So where do you start to pray? The only thing I'm just asking that he should do is, if he can, let him start being, by being sincere. Talk to Nigerians in the way they should understand. Because he had this, this proud, pride, Enigma. He feels that he owns Nigeria. He feels that he owns everybody. That is why he cannot even come to media house. He cannot even go to court. He doesn't go anywhere. So how do you, how can you pray for this kind of person who feels that he's even God to Nigeria? He feels that he's even doing us favor for being a president. So this is the problem. You can only pray for someone who says, look, pray for me. He never asks for prayer any day. So in that aspect, no. Then the other one you ask him, how can he help? If he can start from trying to reconcile the ethnic nationalities. As of today, we are disjointed. 
I'm telling you the truth. Most Nigerians don't even believe in this entity. It is now becoming ethnic. And they created it. Because I was expecting, when we had the problem in, in Rivers, had the problem in Lagos State, I expected him to come out openly and condemn that. Not on press statement. There's a difference between press release and you talking to your, your citizens. But only press statement and nothing happened. As of today, those people who perpetrated those fraud, those violence, those mayhem, are still lurking around. They are still working. Okay, let me ask you, Anne. As of two days or three days ago, we saw Asari Tokubo, Abi Asari, yeah, in Abuja, with a lot of people, a base of people, they call it. Are these people religious? Are they are threatening Nigerians? That if anybody comes out, they are going to deal with that person. I didn't see my president talk against that. I didn't see my president say, no, I'm not part of that particular group. So as of today, Nigeria is under siege. Nobody can even talk. And that is why I'm saying, if you want to have a better leader, or if you want to be a better leader, it starts from you, your mm. countenance, mm. your party, your character, your disposition, your posture. When people see you, they will say, yes, this is a, this is a leader. Mm. But what we have... I only when you can only see him when there's a national event, and then that's why we see him in the, the national TV. I've not seen him, especially now. He went to France or where, spent two weeks. He didn't talk to Nigerians after four weeks of, uh, of uh, a, a war. He didn't talk to Nigerians. So, this is the problem we're having when you have such a people or such a leader, you can't know where exactly you're going to start in praying. But yeah. I, I agree with one thing that my brother said. If he can start from restructuring this country, after all, he's a part of Nedeko. He has a, a blueprint of Nedeko on how Nigeria will work. I think that will be better. And we will forgive him for everything. But let him start from where this man stopped, where PMB stopped. If he starts from where PMB uh, MB stopped, then we are all... We are going to, I don't know if we are going to say, because as I, now we are in ICP, they probably we are going to be in a theater, you know. But I pray that whatever it is, the man should come down. He should remove this gap of pride. Come down to citizen. Embrace okay. citizen. How many times have you even seen him publicly? He doesn't come out to public. But you can see other presidential candidates coming out, mingling with him. This is leadership. Leadership not we and them. Master slave identity. That's what we are seeing. And it cannot continue to work. And it cannot end in citizens um, have citizen support if it cannot talk to them, if it cannot meet with them, if it not cannot meet with them, if it cannot feel them. Okay. This is what we need now. Nigeria okay. needs healing. And that healing shall come from a president who okay. understands what healing means. And that healing means that it will start from him and he shall start by coming okay. to the public and embracing us. As citizens. All right, uh, Baba Shola, let's talk about some of the other I issues uh, that have to do with policies that the president elect is going to inherit. I mean, we can talk about the fact that, look, um, Nigeria is um, plagued by insecurity. We're dealing with um, a high level of indebtedness, whether we like it or not. There's some level of hopelessness right now for the average Nigerian, and there's so many pervading problems. Last minute, in the space of one month, this administration that's outgoing has borrowed and borrowed and borrowed. As of yesterday, 225 billion also in the works. Um, and they're saying it's payment for um, court cases or um, you know something about the judiciary. And, and we have already exceeded our borrowing you know, um, threshold. So let's look at some of the things that he has to deal with and where do you think he should start from if you were to be part of the advisory body? Where would you um, you know, advise the president-elect to start from in dealing with Nigeria's married problems? Okay, um, on that, I would say if I go to be one, if I go to be one of the uh, advisories, I will actually advise him to start from the reduction of cost of governance. Um, the appointment of uh, special advisors, senior special advisors, assistant senior 
special assistance, all those things. It has to be reduced. Let's have a specific number of special advisors that can work. If you have the ministers, why do we even need the special advisors for everything all over again? We have about 30 something ministries, and you are having a special assistant, special advisor of about 30 something also. And we have some governors too, who have, we have 400 and 700 and something special advisor for nothing. A cost of governance has to be reduced. What are the, those things that are not necessary that we have created to, 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 to uh, we have created for for, for uh, to, to increase the cost of governance. So all those things has to be looked into. How many starters are there? How many establishments that the government have, uh, that, that is being backed by law that are not actually functioning, but they are just there and collecting allocation and we are not seeing any results? Let's start from there. Reduce the cost of governance for, uh, by all means. Then the next thing we need to do is to look at if, I would also advise you to, for him to look at what has been done with all the loans that have been collected by this government since 2015 up to now. Because if you have to look at all the loans, as the one that is even proof only that even surprising was the one of yesterday, that the government is now asking for additional loans of about 270 billion for the National Assembly to approve. For what purpose? What have they been doing with all the bonds? This 77 trillion era or over 77 trillion naira we talk about. Where are where where is those is the, is the money? What have they done with money? They need we need to look into it. All those things have to be queried. If the government is actually serious about impacting the lives of the people, if the government is not serious about that, then that means the Nigeria will, the Nigeria will continue to live in debt. Look at Nigeria of today. If we cannot continue to live in debt, cannot continue to borrow from the national or international organization for our for, because we are not actually generating revenue that will be enough for us to, to that we are not for us to service this loan and at the same time develop our country for uh, the economic or the, the, the uh, economic growth of kind of development. We are we cannot use such loan. We cannot use the revenue we are generating. So we have a lot of things to do. This government has to do something about the cost of government. It has to be reduced by all means. Then we well also one thing that is very important is I will also to, to address the issue of insecurity. When we are talking of insecurity, we are talking of people being attacked, people being kidnapped. We are talking of banditry. We are talking of all those things. They have to be addressed. Let the military to totally be military. Let the police to totally be police. Let those that are in charge of or in charge of uh, vanity, let them concentrate on it. Let there be no issue like this government that is going out now. That it has never for once said anything about the ends men that were attacked. All of okay. the after last year, Pama, we're not even hearing anything about 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 the uh, ends men again. I don't know if it's happened, but the bandits they have all turn the seven to bandit to whereby they collect money from people as a uh, negotiation fee or whatever. So all this thing has to stop. Then Nigeria is divided. Nigeria is divided. He has to do something about to unite us. There are a lot of things actually, but I know the time is almost spent. So I, I, I will stop there. Thank you. Well, it looks like uh, it's a very huge and a daunting task ahead of the president-elect. We look forward to uh, Monday and, um, of course, right after that, work begins. I want to say thank you, Babashala Adewi and uh, Sonny Maduka, are both political analysts. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank yeah. you. Um, thank you very much. Thank All right. You. We'll take a quick break and then we will go to River State, where Toya Cole is challenging the election results in River State. And he's saying it's not backing down. Stay with us. <laughs>